Yo, 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 guys, Poison here, and this is my rant slash guide, whatever you want to call it, on my discharge build. I promised it after I get my second one, uh, my second uh, Assassin 200, I'm going to do a guide on it or talk on it, how I, how I uh, built my uh, setup and why. So I will uh, start with um, a little bit of disclaimer, call it whatever you want it. This build is made uh, purely for strength farming because we are having a strength meta right now, kinda. It can go up to tier 13, probably even higher if you really, really want it. But you probably want to get more um, multipliers on your jewels. But we're going to talk about it later. So, once again, it's a really, really, really fast map clear uh, XP farmer. And I went on full attack speed. So it's, it's really, really well optimized for strength farming, but I'm going to show it right after I talk through the build. I will do a map just so you can see what I'm talking about. So that's the, that's the really short disclaimer. I'm going to go into uh, the build now. So as I said, we're going to take Assassin. Uh, I mean shadow, then as the ascendancy we'll have assassin and as assassin you want to take the first node you'll take unstable fusion then you go deadly fusion then you go ambush then you go assassinate in this order that's it uh, bandits you will have uh, kill all if you want the skill point or uh, you can take the resist uh, I took the resist because uh, it gives you much more room to work with your gear when you're balancing your resist to have uh, element, elemental weakness cap on red maps but you can go with the skill point if you feel like you have enough gear or your gear is uh, godlike enough to uh, cap out your resistances uh, on the second difficulty, you take Creighton for the attack speed, and uh, on the third difficulty, you take Oak for the endurance charge. So I have six endurance charges and uh, six power charges. The reason why I took Oak because, or the endurance charge, because you have a uh, higher ignites and. Since we have this amulet here, I gain an endurance charge when a power charge expires or it's consumed. So you pretty much go through the map, you hit monsters, you discharge all the time, and all your power charges transform into endurance charges. So you pretty much have six endurance charges up throughout the whole map, and that gives you defenses as well. So your ignites are higher, your damage is pretty much the same, if you take power charge, it's going to be probably a little bit more. But this way you have more defenses and your ignite is higher. So if you... You will pretty much one-shot monsters. But if it happens that you don't one-shot the monster, it will die to the ignite. So that's it. That, that, those are the bandits and the ascendancy. So I'm going to go through the gear now and the links. So we have... The Cosprey's Malice, preferably you want it with 14% um, attack speed, which is the most you can get on the weapon. Why we have this weapon? Because cast a socket cold spell on melee critical strike. And since this charge is considered a, a cold spell as well, uh, it, it procs your discharge. It's linked to control destruction and increased area of effect. That's the weapon setup. You have Helmet, you want the hubris circlet uh, with 40% increased discharge damage. Uh, I have, I get a lot of questions. Uh, why do you take uh, increased discharge damage instead of instead of the 30% chance not to consume charges? Well, 30% not to consume charges. Uh, doesn't do anything to you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys what you get from each, and then you will take whatever you want to. 
but I suggest to take the 40% uh, increased damage. So what you get from the 30% not to consume charges, while well, going through the map, you, absol you get absolutely nothing from it because you want to one shot all the packs and you just shield charge through the map. So you don't use your cyclone, your two discharges, this one and uh, this one don't sync up. So the 30% chance to not to consume charges will not do anything to you. And even on boss fights, there is a chance that your two uh, discharges sync up. Then if they sync up, you still have to hit the 30% chance not to consume charges. So it's not guaranteed that you don't consume charges. So when your two discharges sync up, you have to hit the roll of one in three to not consume the charges, right? So it's pretty much useless in my personal opinion. You can take it if you really want to, but I suggest to take the 40% increased damage and now I will tell you what you get from it. Depending on your tree and your jewels, how much uh, added damage you take on your jewels, this will give you roughly around 8 to 12% more damage. I know this is 40% increased, not 40% more, but it will translate into like 10% more damage throughout the whole map and on the boss fight. So you get 10% more damage here, while on the other side with the 30% chance not to consume charges, you get absolutely nothing. All right, this is my take on it. Then you want as high as, uh, high as, as high accuracy as you can get, as high ES as you can get, and I will tell you in a second why, to stack as much ES as you can uh, have on all your items. Then double resist preferably, because it's really, really hard to balance uh, resistances on uh, a discharger. Uh, what we have here is discipline, enlighten, level 4, purity of fire and purity of lightning. So these are defenses, right? Uh, and um, we, we need the purity of lightning and the purity of fire against the uh, reflex, right? Because we charge through. If you don't have these, you're gonna cock block yourself. Enlighten 4 is not mandatory. You can go from Enlighten 2 to Enlighten 4. If you have Enlighten 2 only, I would suggest to take my uh, plus two mana gain on hit on one of your jewels having enlightened four allows me to take something else on the jewels but i will tell you when we get uh, to the jewels then we have a shield here as high yes again as possible uh, if you can get the crit size chance for spells fine if not it's okay as well preferably double resistances as I say, it's really hard to stack up the resistances. Then we have increased duration, wall haste, and faster casting. So uh, when you when you charge through the map and you cast uh, your uh, wall haste, it's gonna be almost instant. If if you don't have faster casting, it's gonna be a little bit clunky, like a 0.5 second cast time or something like that. Then we have um, Eldrion rings. Minus 8 mana cost to, of skills. I think you can go 7 and 8. I went 8-8 eight, eight. and accuracy obviously. Then you multi-mod it and you get the flat ES and percent ES. And at the end, whatever resistances you will need. I needed the cold, so I take the cold. Then we have uh, insanity gloves. Again, if you can get accuracy, it's really good to stack accuracy here as well. If, uh, if not, then it's still fine if you can have a tier 3, I guess. Adrian Rings, uh, the, the maximum uh, accuracy you can get on Adrian Rings is tier 3, which is going to be from 201. It's really important, guys. It's 201 to 250. So if it's below 201, then it's a tier 4 accuracy roll, and that's going to go lower than it goes from 150 to 200, I guess. So you want a tier 3 accuracy and stack as much as you can. I will show you in a second why. So we have uh, insanity gloves. If you can get the accuracy, fine. If not, 
and you can stack up accuracy on the other parts of the gear, it's good as well. So I took intelligence for more yes, obviously one resistances and uh, as high energy shield I could get. This was on the market at the moment I bought them. And since then I couldn't find a good deal. We have shield charge, faster attacks, uh, 45 for defenses and uh, increased AOE. It adds more AOE to your, for your shield charge so you can proc it from more distance and you can proc more monsters when you uh, charge through the map. All right, we have uh, Crystal Belt. This is another discussion people were asking me about uh, Headhunter. Headhunter has no room in this build in my personal opinion. First of all, because it uh, it doesn't allow you to to get the resistances on it, right? Then you have to take resistances on your jewels and then you miss up on a lot of attack speed on the jewels. Uh, that's a lot of mobility. That's a lot of speed. I know you can get haste or us and stuff like that from uh, headhunters, but you will still be slower than uh, a full attack speed setup. I compared the two and trust me, it's a lot slower. So this way you can stack up a lot of and you miss up on the energy shield as well. So I got two resistances, um, high S, yes, as high yes as possible, as I said, reduced flash charges used and movement speed. So I have, I have this 5% movement speed because the shield charge scales off of your attack speed and movement speed. So I have this guaranteed 5% all the time. While on the other hand, you will not have haste or us all the time on the maps. In fact, I don't know, like 50, 70% of the time, you will not have a haste aura in this, the first part of the map, right? So the headhunter is just a fancy thing for fun or whatever, but in my opinion, it's not efficient. And on top of it, it costs a shitload and it's not justified. All right, we have um, dead store boots um, because of the uh, endurance charge plus one to max endurance charges uh, and the bleed the bleed removal or we are immune to bleed effects and I will show you in a second why but I can tell you actually we don't have a, a room for a bleed removing flask and this is these are just perfect boots for this purpose they serve two two things like actually more than two because we have all raised 550% all resistant uh, on them as well the only downside is that we have like 5% less uh, movement speed like we could have on the other other boots but then again we have the endurance charge it's just just the best boots straight up then we have cast on damage taken support ice golem so we don't have to manually cast it all the time immortal call for defenses and warrior's mark for leech and the enchantment on the boots, I took for 16% attack and cast speed if you've killed recently. So throughout your whole map, you will have 16% more, I mean, increased attack and cast speed, which is super, super nice. And you don't need the leech. Leech is stupid to take here. All right. So I left the, I left the armor piece and the amulet for the last because uh, we have to take Wasp Protector because of the gain of power charge for each enemy you hit with a critical strike you pretty much crit throughout the whole map and this is how you generate your power charges and um, the amulet is uh, the amulet will transfer your power charges into endurance charges Getting an energy charge when a power charge expires or is consumed by your discharge. So the, these two items are mandatory. Then the link setup is cast on crit, cyclone, blade fall, or peacock, whatever you want. Peacock increases your uh, mm, mana usage on the cyclone, right? It has a mana multiplier, that's why I took blade fall. And it serves for this, uh, the same purpose, it generates you the charges. And Firestorm, again, same exact reason, generates power charges and it doesn't have a mana multiplier, 
So uh, my Cyclone will not cost more. My Cyclone is actually three mana cost, which is super, super nice. And I don't have to take plus two uh, mana gain on hit on one of my jewels. That frees up for me more attack speed. I will show you the jewels in a second. So, and we have increased crit strike support as the last uh, link. Then uh, flasks, dying sun, obviously for the area of effect. You get uh, six to max fire rest, which is really nice as well. But it's mainly for the area of effect. Chaos determination is uh, obviously immunity to freeze, chill, curses, and stuns during flask effect. You have all your flask up throughout the whole map, which is really really nice. Then you need the wing tars with uh, lightning penetration and uh, for shocks. Then you need a uh, diamond flask with uh, immunity to shock, so you remove the shock that you gain from what you get from your wing tars pretty obvious and then you have a alchemist quicksilver for the most movement speed you can get here that's pretty much the setup and then we have the skill tree right yep let's go to the skill tree so it's a generic uh, assassin cosplays I will give you some uh, some variances on it. Like you go through. These are all mandatory. You can get you get some accuracy here, dexterity that you need for your cosplays. I took this node for example. Probably it's a little bit different from other builds that you can see. I couldn't get what you want to get on your uh, gear is 29 29 de dexterity. I couldn't get that on my gear, so I had to take this note to be able to use the Cosprey's Malice because it has a crazy uh, requirement on dexterity, it's 212 dexterity requirement as you can see. And yeah, that's the reason why I took that node. Other than that, you want to take the Aura Effective nodes, this and this one. Don't forget about this one, because this one pushes your purities up from 79% to 80% resistances. That's plus one, and that's really, really nice. On this note, I want to point out something. Like, if you can get... I, I took 8% attack speed on my uh, Vos Devotion. I went full potato attack speed, as I said. Uh, you can get if you can get plus one max resistances and want to go to higher maps. That's really really nice to have. You'll be a little bit slower, but you will have a lot more defenses. So it's really expensive though. So it's like 30x or 25x, which I don't I don't really need for uh, strand maps and up to like tier 13 you don't need it probably. But since we can uh, have mul multiple strand maps all the time, we just don't need that. All right. So back to the skill tree. It's a generic uh, discharge uh, skill tree. Uh, you want intuitive leap here to be able to take these three nodes. Uh, as much attack speed, area damage, flasks and uh, jewel sockets as you can get if you want a little bit more defenses you cannot get uh, enough es on your gear and you 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 want to be a little bit slower probably then you can take these three off these three points here then you can put them get somehow take a point off somewhere else as well and take this uh, melding then you get the jewel that uh, adds you more yes uh, but then you lose up on a on a lot of attack speed so it's preferable to get your yes on your gear and attack speed on your on your jewels so what i have on my jewels is like 5% attack speed, 6% attack speed, 8% attack speed, then area damage. This is pretty much the perfect jewel for this build. 
uh, the attack speed doesn't go higher. The range is from three to five. Then the range is from three to six, I think. Then five to eight, and the air damage is maxed out as well. Same jewel here. It's a little bit less attack speed. I couldn't divine it higher. I didn't really need it because I'm at seven attacks per second. Then we have same exact setup, triple attack speed and multiplier, triple attack speed multiplier. Uh, this one is double attack speed and multiplier. I couldn't get the third jewel with attack speed. I didn't really need it anymore. So this is really good. So you can watch out the, the yellow packs as well. Same here. Triple attack speed multi. And same here, triple attack speed multi. Then we have the intuitive leap as I see it here. Now on the character sheet, uh, as you can see, I'm at, um, let me go like this, it's all right. I'm at seven attacks per second. It's, it's, it's more than enough. You don't want to get higher. Sometimes I felt like I, I put my cosplays on cooldown. I'm not sure if it's lag or I actually put it on cooldown because of the super in, super crazy speed. So I don't really want to get higher on the attack speed because it goes like 8.6 with um, wall haste up. Then what you want to get is the main hand accuracy rating. So you stack up, and this is what I wanted to point out. Stacking accuracy, you need to stack up accuracy uh, until this hits 2.5k. This is the... This is the... The threshold you want to hit. Then you get more from the golem and you'll have like... Chance to hit will be... Um, around 90%. Right? So that, that's what you want to hit. Now take speed as much as you can get. Like this is pretty much the max that I got. You will not... Probably will not be able to get higher than that. That's it, that's my take on Cospreys. I'm gonna do a strand now, just to show you up uh, the build, how it how it goes. Feel free to change whatever you want to. On the jewels, a little, a little note on the jewels. Uh, if you want to go on higher maps, you probably want to have double attack speed and double multipliers, uh, instead of three attack speed and uh, one multiplier. Below this, below this uh, video, I will leave you a spreadsheet as well, and I will give you in the spreadsheet on the right side of the spreadsheet, I will give you guys some example of really good jewels if you cannot get these full potato, super expensive uh, jewels. All right. So I'm gonna give you a spreadsheet about the build and about jewels and everything. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope I covered everything. If I didn't, feel free to ask me below this below this video or uh, you can find me on Twitch every single day. I'm streaming every day on Twitch TV at Poison TV. That's it. Have a great day guys. Uh, thanks for watching and I'm gonna do a strand map just to show up the build. Have a great day guys.